Hi, I'm Whitney. I was one of Sean's castmates in a play recently. Um, music licensing specialist and, by day and cat bed by night. And I'm answering 10 questions. Who or what were you in a previous life? Oh, Brent answered this question too. I, I actually love it. I have thought about who I would be. I feel like I totally would have made it in like the 1920s or 1930s as like a hoofer in the theater, like tap dancing. That I I could have I could have totally done that. I really think that's how I would have made my way in the world if I were if I was there in a previous life. That's how I think what I think I would have done. I am not very good at singing and dancing at the same time right now. I would probably have had to become good at it. But like, no joke, not to sound like real braggadocio or anything, but I've seen 42nd Street technically multiple times, um, once in a live theater setting and once like a production of the play was like cast live to a movie theater in this area. And really seriously, there are a few tap moves I've never been able to master for the life of me, but I can seriously do like 85% of that choreography. What inanimate object would you purge from reality? Oh my God, that is a very good question. I don't know. Yeah, I truly have no idea. Cause you see, if we're talking like animate objects that aren't like people, I would get rid of mosquitoes easily. I hate mosquitoes, but they're they're living creatures still. Um. Could I, could I possibly get rid of all the like excess, like greenhouse gases in the atmosphere? Is that like a valid answer? <laughs> Cause that's the only thing I can think of. And technically they are not alive and it is an object in some form, although gaseous, like. YOLO or carpe diem? Um. As much as I like to pretend I'm the kind of person who's dignified enough to say carpe diem on a regular basis and make it actually sound convincing, I am more of a YOLO person. Which classic movie monster type do you identify with? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, almost like a Guillermo del Toro-esque answer. I think there's definitely a certain amount of pathos in the kinds of monsters that are more curious about humanity than like just lashing out more animalistically. I remember it was a swamp thing that I watched when I was younger. It was, but it was a movie with a swamp monster type character in it. And I remember really the only scene I remember from this movie is that the, you know, requisite attractive female lead in it was swimming in this freaking like jungle pond or whatever. And he the monster like rose up from the depths and like started sort of mimicking her swimming strokes. Like he was trying to learn from her. And of course they played it as some weird like romance angle thing, which honestly to me is not as compelling as like the kind of mon the kinds of monsters that again are curious about humanity, but going off that, the kinds of monsters that sort of are meant to make us question what it even means to be human in the first place. Like the scariest monsters are what's in the mirror, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So I definitely find those the most compelling. I really can't remember what movie it was for the life of me. I probably should look that up later. I think it was like a five word title, like Attack of the Something Something or Dawn of the whatever. I truly don't remember. That one scene just like really made an impression on me for whatever reason. Like I can recall it even now, even like, God, it must be like nearly 20 years later. Perform your species mating call. I'm just recalling a very embarrassing story. Long story short, I was in Salt Lake City. This was like five, near four and a half, five years ago. It was for a friend's wedding, a college friend specifically, and some other college friends and I, after the wedding, which was like sort of a brunch affair, went out to explore and we ended up at Temple Square because one of my friends was like really interested in like religious history and stuff like that. We were greeted almost at the gate by this pair of like missionaries. I guess they had them walking around in pairs as like tour guides and stuff. One of them, what they had like name badges with their country of origin on them too. One of, that's how I know one of them was from like South Korea. She didn't say a word the entire time. She was much shyer. The other girl was from Sweden. 
Her name was Sister Krillborn. And she was really pretty, and I was instantly, like, gay smitten with her. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like, she... She was gorgeous, though. She had this, like, dirty blonde hair, and, like, she was wearing this really, this really gorgeous, like, A-line navy dress, because it, it was the 4th of July, so everybody was, like, sort of dressed up in red, white, and blue, so it's, like, this navy dress with, like, I think a red belt and, like, red lipstick, and so she looked really nice, and I was just, like, oh, she's so pretty. Uh, why did I ever think I was straight? The conversation that ensued was about um, like 20% just small talk, 60% um, like sweet and thinly veiled like proselytizing in our direction, even though this is another fun story for another time. Like 80% of my friend group in college was from the same evangelical Christian student group, even though I am a hardcore atheist or not hardcore, but like very, I've made up my mind on that front, but somehow I befriended all these evangelical Christians in college, long story. I was trying my best and my best was not very good mind you to like flirt with her while simultaneously like like rebuffing the proselytizing like i literally i came out to maybe like three people in my college friend group total and i literally outed myself in front of all these like people just so like sweden would know that i wasn't just being friendly to be friendly i was being friendly because i was interested but me being you know an awkward little baby i was doing a terrible job at it this is the kicker this is why i'm telling you this story to answer the um whitney species mating call question at one point sweden pulled out the ebook of mormon i am not kidding you she had the entire like book of mormon on an ipad and it was like, there was some sort of feature within the ebook where you could just like highlight a piece of the text and like ask a question about it. And like an actual Mormon would answer you. And they were like, it was available in like freaking 18 different languages or something like that. Legitimately, it was a cool piece of tech. And at that point, I thought I wanted to try for a career in the book publishing industry. And I was actually about to attend like a summer short course to that effect. So I said to Sweden something like, wow, this is a really well-constructed ebook. I'm um, going into the publishing industry, so I notice these things. You guys are the future of the ebook. My, my dumb ass was trying to flirt via ebooks. And it was so terrible. <laughs> We left to go like check out some exhibition. I whispered to one of my friends um, to whom I had actually like already come out before the conversation I was like, in other news, I'm really gay. And he was like, oh my God, Whitney. I'm like, I know. So yeah, apparently terrible flirting by talking about like the infrastructure of eBooks is the Whitney species mating call. And it is so dorky. Which infinity stone did you find? Oh God, that's a great question. Honestly, I feel like I would kind of like to find the red one. Remind me what that is. It's been a while. The ether, yeah. reality stone, yeah. Something I, that I feel like doesn't get appreciated enough is that while the whole like entire like guardians of the galaxy had to like link hands just to handle the power of the purple stone, power stone, whatever it was, Jane Foster absorbed the entire ether and didn't die. At the time when Thor The Dark World came out, I kind of wished she'd like figured out how to use it as a weapon just cause like, you know, shooting like pure red power from your hands to girl at witch style would have been really cool. But honestly, like the fact that she, I mean, she was not doing so hot with the ether like in her. One person was able to withstand that stone. So I don't know, I think that's pretty badass of her. So I guess if I had to pick one, it'd be that for that reason. What was the first video game you ever played? Oh my God, generally speaking, I do not game any videos. I, most of the time I just watch Will from the couch and offer snarky commentary. But the one video game I am really good at is Guitar Hero 3. I dominate at that. <laughs> and that that's it, that is all I'm good at. I was surprisingly good at it. Surprising considering I can't actually play a real guitar. <laughs> I've wanted to learn now, now that I know how like tablature works. I'm like, wait, that's a way easier way of figuring out how to play things than just like, cause I, 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 learned, I learned piano first, right? So I'd always like pick up one of my dad's guitars and excuse me, and like try to like lay out the notes in my head and like just go along the fretboard. And I'm like, what the, 
what was I doing all this time? I could have just been reading Tab. Like, what? When was a time you should have quit while you were ahead? You know, honestly, the thing that comes to mind first is dropping pre-med in college. I was a biochem major for a year and pre-med for two years. Like I switched to an English major my second year of college because I realized I hated lab classes for whatever reason. I think I'd be okay with them now, but I just kind of stayed pre-med because I wasn't sure what the hell else I wanted to do with myself. And in retrospect, I kind of wish I'd been able to like articulate all my misgivings about that to myself sooner. I mean, my my reasons for like sticking with pre-med at the time, I think were pretty valid because I, again, I didn't know what else I wanted to do. But if I had just been like, okay, this is not working out right now, at least I need to take some time to figure that out. And in the meantime, let me try this other stuff. I could have had an entirely different college experience, possibly a a better one because let's be frank sophomore year was just like the worst year of college for me it was organic chemistry one and two enough said it was it was ghastly somehow i managed a's in both semesters but at what cost oh it was bad part of it was definitely like me pushing myself way too hard and sticking to a decision that i wasn't confident in anymore just because i had already put so much time into it. Definitely sort of like a sunk cost fallacy thing. I have thought multiple times, like if I could go back in time and talk to my upper high school, early college self, I would straight up tell myself, hey, pre-med is not gonna work out. Go minor in like, I don't know, anthropology or information studies or something like that. Do something else. You might be surprised at what you like. Just purely for the sake of like, efficiency like things would have been way easier if i figured my crap out way earlier i guess i know my limits and that was that year was very much an object lesson in learning what my limits were and learning how to like articulate them to myself as well as to like the people around me and stuff favorite non-english word or phrase so i'm an eighth check on my mother's side of the family and my my great grandmother Lillian's sister, her husband worked in a meat locker in the small town of Protoman, Iowa, for like years and years and years before his entirely too peaceful death. He was a douchebag. The, I say this because there is a particular type of um, Czech sausage. It's pronounced itanitsa, but spelled J I T R N I C E because the Czech are weird. I can say that I'm part check. It's okay. So several years ago, I don't know where this shirt went. I was trying to track it down the other day, but we realized that this meat locker where my great, great uncle, I guess, used to work was selling like these neon yellow shirts with got Ethanitsa on them and like the info for Palashik's meat locker on the back. So at one point in my life, I should still have it somewhere, but I legitimately own or owned a t-shirt again freaking like hunting yellow like don't shoot me in the woods type of yellow that said got sausage on it in check what's your most useless talent making a sad trombone noise like i have actually tweeted about this in the <clears throat> let, let me see if, let me see if i can do a good one <laughs> That was actually pretty good. <laughs> also, I would add um, parking too close to the person beside me on the left, but still somehow squeezing out of my car. That's useless, except in the area of like not dinging somebody else's car, which I, I suppose is some has some degree of utility, but still it's like, that's my superpower. I, I, I want a refund. <laughs> that's great. Congratulations. You've made a YouTube video. Yay. Was that fun or did you hate it? That was really fun, actually. Yes. Excellent. 